Put him up. Yeah. Yeah. Remember that slope fields are a graphical representation of all the possible solutions of a differential equation. So if I'm listing all the possible solutions, right, how many possible solutions are there? There's an infinite amount, right? Because when I get the solution to a, a differential equation, I'm integrating and I'm ending up getting a plus C on the, on the answer, right? So that's why there's an infinite amount, okay? So those solutions that it's representing are actually the, what? All the general solutions, right? Okay, now sometimes they ask you, one of the things they could ask you is to draw a particular solution, okay? So they would have to provide you with a point, right? To go, through. we'll talk about that today. So, quick reminder, a differential equation is the first derivative of some function, thus the solution to the differential equation is the original equation, or whatever you get after you integrate that equation, right? Now remember we said earlier that there was an infinite number of solutions to this differential equation. Let's uh, warm up by finding out what the original equation would be for this guy. So what would be the first thing that I would do to find the infinite number of solutions? So it would be dy equals x plus 3 dx. We have to separate the variables. Then we can integrate both sides, and we end up with what? y is equal to 1 half x squared plus 3x plus c. Okay, and the fact that we have that plus c and we don't know what it, what it is, it could be any number, right, is the reason why we have what? an infinite number of solutions, okay? The slope field would have to follow the trend of this graph, right? So in other words, if I look at the slope field, it better be a slope field that is kind of forming a what? Parabola. A parabola in this case, right? Because that's what the original solution should be. You understand? Yes? Mm -hmm. All right, so if your slope field doesn't look like a parabola, it may be that you did something wrong. Okay, so you want to be careful. All right, so there's five things that you need to be able to do with slope fields for the AP test. The first one is what we did yesterday. What did we do? We sketched or planted, right, a slope field. So we sketched a, a slope field. Provided that they gave us what? Very good. So for a given differential equation. So sometimes they give you the differential equation, which is the slope generator, and you just use it to create your slope field. Super easy, right? Usually that's a, a one-point question. Right? Another question that co could come out on the multiple choice, which is kind of what came out here, was that given a slope field, They could ask you to sketch, I'm sorry, this isn't the one that came out. This is a different one. So they could ask you to sketch a particular solution to the differential equation. Okay. And this particular solution, you could call it a solution curve. Okay, so they're asking you to sketch a solution curve to that differential equation, a particular one. So they're going to provide you with a point that you're going to put on the slope field, and then you're going to have to follow some criteria when you draw it. Okay, like one of them is that it has to obviously go through that point. If you draw the solution curve, but it doesn't go through the point, you're not going to get credit. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we're going to go over that you've got to be careful when you're drawing that. Number three is the one that was like on the test. So number three would be like a matching problem. And you're going to match a slope field to a given differential equation. For example, on the mock exam, they gave you a differential equation and you had to match it to one of the slope fields as the answer choice. Okay, the other one that they could give you is to match a 
a slow field, not to a differential equation, but to a what? Yeah, so a, to a given solution to a differential equation. Now let's say I'm really good at doing number three. Could I still do what I did in number three for number four? Could I get the differential equation for number four? If I had the original one? Yeah, what do I have to do to this equation to have the differential one? Get its what? Get its first derivative, right? Now this problem became just like number three, right? So if I'm really good at matching problems like number three, then I can just uh, get the derivative of this equation that's provided, and I'll be doing number three. Now, let's say I'm the opposite. Let's say I'm really good at matching it to the original equation. Could I convert number three to be like number four? Yes, by doing what to number three? Integrating that differential equation to get the original. Okay, so these two are kind of like working out the same problem. Okay? And the last one, the last thing that they could possibly ask you to do is to state the domain of a particular solution to a differential equation. Okay? Pretty good? So we're going to kind of do examples of each one of the five, and, uh, and then that should be it for today, okay? Part of it, you're going to work in partners, so there's going to be some examples where I'm going to ask you to get with your partner and see if you can figure them out, give you about six to seven minutes, and then uh, that'll be like on these matching ones, okay? And then we'll come back together and see how you did, see how you answered, okay? Sure. Sounds good? Easy? All right, so let's do the first thing. Let's see if we can be able to do that. Sketch a slope field for a given differential equation. Well, let's look at this first one here. They're giving us the differential equation. We need to draw the proper slope at each of the marks. Okay? Now, if we think about it, what's going to affect my answer here? Only the x part of the, of the point, right? So the y isn't going to do anything. So if I plug in 1, it's like if I were plugging 1 in for all these points, right? Yeah. So should I get the same answer for all of those points? Yeah. All right, so let's try it. If I put in 1 and 0, what do I get? I don't care about the y, right? So it's just 1. 1 minus 1. 0. So here I should have a little slanted horizontal line. How about at 1, 1? Is that also zero? How about at one two? One three? One negative one? One negative two? It's the same for all of them because all we're plugging in is a what? The x value, right? And we're plugging in the same x value. How about if I plug in a two? Two minus one? One. So all of these are going to have a slope of what? How about if I plug in anything on the zero, on the axis here? Negative one? Negative one? Mm -hmm. All right. Make sure you draw them correct. How about if I plug in negative one? I'd get negative two, right? So for all of these, I'm going to get negative two. So it has to be something a little bit steeper than the one I just drew. What am I going to get if I plug in a negative two? Negative three. Negative 3, so even steeper. Cool? And what should they end up forming? Parabola, why a parabola? When I integrate it, what do I get? 1 half x squared minus x plus c, right? Very good. So they should be forming a parabola and it kind of matches. Very good. All right. How about the bottom one down here? Does the y affect it here? Yes. Okay, so i got to be careful. So let's start off with the ones here at the 0. So 0 minus 0. 0. 
0, 1. 0 minus 1, negative 1. 2, 0 minus 2, negative 2. 0 minus 3, negative 3. So far so good. 0 minus negative 1, positive 1. 0 minus negative 2, positive 2. Okay. Move on to the next one. So 1 and 0. 1 minus 0. 1. 1 and 1. 1 minus 1. 0. 1 and 2. 1 minus 2. Negative 1. Anybody notice something yet? 1 and 3. 1 minus 3. Negative 2. What did you notice? Like kind of like diagonal? Yeah. Ooh. Does it, does it work for all of them? Yeah? All right. Well, then let's save time and not uh, kill ourselves doing that, right? So what would this one be? Same as this guy, right? Mm -hmm. well, how about this one? Oh, I don't have one. Now uh, well, let's do it. One negative two, right? So one minus negative two? Positive 3? So even steeper, right? Okay, cool. How about, I mean, I don't know. Where do you want to go? Are we start here? This one's going to match that one? This one's going to match this one? That one's going to be 0. And that one's going to be negative. Yes? This one should match this one, which we said was 3. And this one, we've got to figure it out, right? So that's 2, negative 2. 2 plus 2. Four, even steeper. All right, now let's go to the other side. What's this one going to be? One, then zero, right? Then negative one, and then I think that one was negative two, and then I think that one was negative three, and then I think this one's going to be negative what? Four? This one's going to be 0, right? This one's going to be negative 1. This one's going to be negative 2. This one's going to be negative 3. This one's going to be negative 4. This one's going to be negative 5. Cool? So how does this curve look like it's going to be? It's going to be decreasing, right? Because the slopes are negative. Right? And then? It's going to be zero. And then what? And then increasing, right? What do you think is going to be right here? What do you think we're going to have here, probably? Probably a slanted acetone, right? Cool. And this one's probably doing the same thing. It's really coming up like that and then increasing. Just that we don't have enough points for you. Yeah? Cool? Alright, let's try doing number two, the second thing. So given the slope field, sketch a solution curve through a given point. Okay. So there's a couple of things to remember. Number one is the curve must go through the point. Obviously, right? Number two, it must follow the general trend of the curve. I mean of the field, right? So if you draw something totally off than what the field is depicting, you're not going to get credit. It must extend as far as possible within its domain or the edge of the given window. Okay, so don't just draw like a little piece like this. You want to make sure you draw it all the way through the whole graph. Okay, and the last thing is to not put arrows at the end. Pretty cool? You think you remember to do all that? Alright, so they gave us this differential equation, which is the one we just drew the slope field for. So it looks like we did it correctly. And uh, we want to sketch the solution curve that goes through the point 1, negative 1. Okay, so if I go to 1 and I go to negative 1, that's going to be right here. I'm going to draw the point. Now I need to draw a curve that goes through that point but follows the trend of the graph. Okay? I think if this is the slope of zero, it's probably going to come up like this, and then maybe go through this one, right? And then maybe go through that one, right? And then 
and curve over this one. Just to kind of make it about even. Yeah? Remember that when the curve is concave up, where are my tangent lines? Underneath it, right? When my curve is concave down, my tangent lines need to be above it, okay? So that's also something to remember. Good? All right, let's try this one. Okay, so we want to draw the solution curve that's going to the point 1, 1. If this is quadratic, what was the original equation? Cubic, right? So we got to kind of have an idea of what our graphs look like. So this is a cubic graph, right? Now is it starting from the top and then coming down? Or is it starting from the bottom and going up? In this case, it's starting from the top because it's actually going to be a negative cubic function, right? You can tell by the slopes they're negative, so it has to be decreasing first, right? Yeah? And then increasing, and then decreasing. We've got to try to draw it as best as we can. So give it a try, and let's see what you can come up with. if anybody does a, a really good one. Where do you think we should probably start? Should we start at the 